They are everywhere. Yeah, that's actually very scary. <laughs> Have you heard of VOCs before you started doing research for this podcast? No, never heard of them at all. No, I didn't no know it was idea. a thing. I didn't know it was a thing at all. And then, yeah. You told me, when you said we were doing VOCs, I was like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I knew kind of the basic idea, like, it came from paint and lead, like, not oh, floor, like, laminate floors, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like gasoline, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, um, you know why they say don't have paint. Yeah, yeah, just like sitting around at, at Yeah, home. yeah, but also don't huff it, don't like... Oh, don't smell don't it. it. <laughs> well, you're paint. not supposed to be like at, at your house whenever they like freshly... Yeah, take okay. walls, right? Hypothetically, you're not, you're, supposed you're not really to. supposed to. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, don't do whippets. Those are VOCs. I didn't know that either. <laughs> yes, I, I once walked up to the dam and saw people doing whippets on the dam. Apparently that is the place. There's a dam what right by the top. Like yeah. all places to go do a whippet. <laughs> well, it's like, you know, it's an earthen dam. So people walk up to the top and then they walk down okay. to the wooded part and then they do their drugs. Okay. That's okay. Houston for you. That is Houston. It happens. Yeah. There was like a lady with a stroller, a family on a bike, and then a bunch of teenagers doing with it. <laughs> oh no. That's like Houston in a nutshell, right? Yep. <laughs> on that note, hi, I'm Mary. And I'm Isis. And we're the homegirls. And today we're talking about volatile organic compounds, also known as VOCs. Yes. As we heard in that video, our whole lives are ruled by VOCs. They are basically all over our home. We're inhaling them every second of every day, which I don't know. How that makes you feel, but I don't know if I like Sounds that. a little scary. Yeah, a little scary, yeah. They come from our paint, our laminate floors, our hair products, candles, air fresheners, and just about like everything. Cleaning products, everything we use in our modern home. Oh my are god. Are VOCs, yeah. So even worse, VOCs are highly emitted from our cars. Of course. And as a result of oil and gas production, which in Houston, we inhale a lot of VOCs from oil and gas. Did you see yep. the sunset last night, how it was purple? I didn't actually see it, but, but okay, it was so purple. It was purple, and that's actually because of like. I said I missed it. <laughs> that was because of the pollution. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's so beautiful. I'm sure as we it watch our nice. doom, our doom unfold. <laughs> it looked nice, but um. At least we get some good sunsets out of the end of the world. Yeah. So. At least. <laughs> this means that Texas, especially, has a very high VOC count. Mm -hmm. Whoop de doo. Of course. Yep. Are VOCs killing us? Kinda. Probably. Yeah. You're going to talk about it. Really depends more. on the situation, but yeah. Yes. ECs is going to cover that more in depth, whether or not we're all dying slowly from VOCs. But first, <laughs> let's talk about the history. Let's do it. So, uh, VOCs did not start with the Greeks and Romans. Okay, interesting. Yes. yes. Although I'm sure they probably had stuff. I think we talked about this a couple podcasts back, how they would throw things in fires to go into the trances. A basic oh yeah, 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 yeah very basic idea of a voc right okay yeah 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 i mean it they, they were doing with this essentially they thought it was some magical yeah stuff. Oh, we talked about that in the carbon monoxide episode <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah 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 that is a form of voc-ing i guess kind of doing whippets off the carbon monoxide <laughs> and getting high and seeing the future oh my god um, but we're not going to talk too much about that yeah yeah uh it was actually really hard to find any history on yeah VOCs. it was actually hard to find information on vocs in general i know i was surprised for as something like i feel that's kind of controversial yeah it's really not not a lot of data on it um, yeah, and if it's everywhere, like you would think that yeah. there would be more information about it, but I agree. The first um, kind of in human history, the first point, like big point we see where VOCs are actually identified maybe as an issue would be the Second World War, and that's pretty recently. I mean, that's just the 1940s for yeah, the United States. That's um, not that long. 1939 ago. for Europe. Um, so basically, it's at this point in the Second World War that the massive increase in the production of synthetic materials, so paints, weapons, you know, uh, almost a lot. Basically, there's this huge wave of industrialization mm -hmm. that you see um, using synthetic material to make things. Yeah. Prior to that, even uh, in the First World War, their uniforms were made of wool, you know, and it's still very traditional materials that they're using. By the Second World War, synthetics are... Yeah much more readily available and so you get synthetics in everything is it like cheaper too or? yeah synthetics can be cheaper definitely um i would argue however even though this is kind of the first point where we see um vocs really harming people in history 
I think um, you could argue that VOCs are probably always been harming. There's always been some yeah. VOC. I mean, yeah, there has to have been. Yeah. And we just didn't know about it. Yeah. Just like we said with the carbon monoxide poisoning, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I would argue that you probably have high VOC harm probably since the first industrial revolution. So starting in the 1760s, this is my uh, very basic academic, you know, analysis of VOCs. My guess is you actually would probably start to see um, VOC related illnesses in the industrial revolution. I mean, it makes sense. That's when they're pumping large amounts of pollution exactly. into the air. So um, now as far as regulation, the first regulation I could find in, uh, for VOCs started in California, which makes sense. In the late 1970s, uh, California starts regulating VOCs from paint. And um, this led to the 1990s when the U.S. government actually started to limit harmful emissions, such as smog and other compounds like um, Freon that are relating to the ozone depletion through the Clean Air Act. Remember when the hole in the ozone layer was our only problem? Good times. Good times. We were so young and innocent then. <laughs> Little um, did we know. I know. The, so this is, the government started passing in the 60s what's called the Clean Air Act. Um, so like I mentioned, the first one was passed in 65, but again, it's not until 1990 that VOCs actually start to become a focus of our Clean Air Act. Wow. Yeah. So That's really recently, yeah. you know, if they pinpoint the start of high VOC pollution to the Second World War, it's not until the 1990 that they actually say, hey, we need That's to like start. like 50 years later. Yeah, we need to start banning this stuff. Um, basically, the uh, argument with the Clean Air Act said that they're not, VOCs aren't inherently hazardous, but they're a source of concern because they serve as a precursor to the formation of damaging ground ozone layers. So we know now that VOCs are definitely hazardous mm -hmm. and they are also definitely contributing to climate change, which if you heard the latest climate change report, we are all going to die. Did you hear that? No. <laughs> well, it's better that you don't Google that because it's actually really, really bad news. Is it really? Yeah, apparently um, 2030 is gonna be a turning point that, we, that none of us are really gonna wanna see. That's, I know. Well, that sounds nine horrifying. Years from now? That sounds horrifying. It is. It is horrifying. Okay. So, um, on a happier note, I guess, uh, let's talk more about what happened in 1990, that Clean Air Act. Yes. It was, this is funny, in the ni early 90s, they were really worried about acid rain. Now, I know my science textbooks when I was like in elementary school and middle school were all about how acid rain was the biggest enemy. Did you have that? I think so. I think I remember reading about that in textbooks. Yeah. It's like, why were we so worried about acid rain? Yeah, why were we so worried about acid rain? Yeah. But in the 1990s, when they finally decided that VOCs are the issue, they're contributing to climate change, they really focused in on acid rain. That was supposed to be our big problem in the future. So innocent. We were so innocent back then. Where is it? Where is the acid rain? <laughs> Where is the, I'd rather have the acid rain at this point. Um, so basically, the focus of that VOC Clean Air Act was designed to reduce acid rain and to improve public health by dramatically reducing emissions of sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides, various nitrogen oxides, and it used a market-based cap and trade approach where the program set a permanent cap on the total amount of sulfur dioxide that could be emitted by electric power plants nationwide. This Clean Air Act did not specifically control uh, the technology, so it didn't say what technology you had to use, you just had to control the toxic air that was coming out. Um, basically encouraging factories and oil and gas companies to create their own technology to um, get rid of acid rain. <sighs> it's hard for me to say all this without laughing. Like, yeah. really? That you thought this was gonna be our problem? Um, Right. Uh, so there is a footnote to EPA regulations. It is the um, more modern regulation is at the federal level. It's called the 40 CFR 59, which is the National Volatile Organic Compound Emission Standards for Consumer and Commercial Products. So in the modern day, if you want to look out, uh, look at, excuse me, what you want, what VOC emissions should be for various products, you're going to go to the 40 CFR 59 which again is the National Volatile Organic Compound Emission Standards for Consumer and Commercial Products. However, wow. outside of that Clean Air Act, 
there really are no other VOC emissions, and they still allow those items to go on sale. Of course they do. Yeah, capitalism. So there's no real regulations outside of that Clean Air Act, meaning that you know we know our air fresheners are poisoning us, but you can still buy them. Yeah, you know, hair products. Jesus. Everything. Yeah, certain makeups, perfumes. Makeup. Baby powders. Oh, my whole um, life is a lie. Yeah, I know. Uh, it gets pretty dark pretty fast. Do you do a whole list of? I didn't. I thought you would do that. Okay. So. I, I'll look it up. I'll okay, try to okay. get the um, the whole list of what emits a VOC. Okay, okay, okay. Um, but yeah, like I, I talked said, a little bit about like where do they come from, but I didn't go into like super specifics about it. But yeah. yeah. So basically, we're all going to die. Yeah. <laughs> do you ever watch Sweeney Todd? Yes, I have. I know that song, We All Deserve to Die, when he pushes her in the oven at the end. That movie's crazy. The movie, well, the play is, the stage play is way better than the movie. Yeah, I'm but, sure it is. Uh, yeah, that's what I think of when um, I, I read stuff like this. <laughs> like, we all deserve to die for what we did. Yep. For the acid rain that mm -hmm. we caused. <laughs> that's going to kill us. So. All right. Um, um, I'm sure you have plenty of good news, so I'm going to hand it over to you. <laughs> Alright, so I'll be talking about um, how VOCs can affect our health, which um, is not good. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. It's bad. But there, um, you know, I'll go into it. I'll go into it. So what are VOCs? We talked about it. We talked about it a little. Um, VOCs are gases that are given off by many indoor sources. Concentrations of most volatile organic compounds are higher in indoor air than outdoor air. Mm -hmm. So it's That's higher right. inside than outside, which is like we're inside, especially now, <laughs> all yeah. the time. <laughs> That's why they say open your windows and get some fresh air circulating around your house. Mm -hmm. That helps with the VOC. Ooh, okay, okay. So where do VOCs come from? This one is called, there's specific ones. This one is called formal formaldehyde. Formaldehyde, I might be saying it wrong, but Formal it's formaldehyde. formaldehyde. It's one of the most common VOCs. It's a colorless gas with an um, acrid, which means sharp and bitter smell. So you can actually smell it. It's common in many building materials, such as plywood, um, particle board, and glues. Yeah, and also what they use to involve it. Mm -hmm. And it can also be found in some drapes and fabrics and mm -hmm. certain types of foam insulation. So that's already a lot of things. <laughs> um, and also cigarettes. Oh, good thing I don't smoke cigarettes. Yep. Oh god. <laughs> um, other sources of VOC include the burning of fuels such as gas, wood, and kerosene, and tobacco products. VOCs can also come from personal care products such as perfume and hairspray, cleaning agents, dry cleaning fluid, paints, liqu liqu uh, liqueurs, that's how you say it right? Lacquer. Lacquers. Lacquers, varnishes, hobby supplies, and from copying and printing machines. Mm -hmm. VOCs can be released from products during use and even in storage. However, the amount of VOCs emitted from products tend to decrease as the product ages. That's true. It's off gassing. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, the longer you have it, the less VOCs. The less it'll off gas. Yeah. Yeah. So right. newer stuff does tend to be much more uh, dangerous. Yeah. Which um, I'll I'll give you a hint. That new car smell, straight up VOC. What? Yep. No. I know. That's actually so sad. It's actually Everybody really, loves really I know. Everybody, Everybody loves, loves a new car it's smell. It's really, really, really bad for you. Oh, no. That's like, okay, hold on. Okay, okay. That's actually crazy. I know. I'm really upsetting. Well, well, <laughs> I'm sad. Yeah. Um, that, okay. So it's actually, I like that example though, because it shows you that it's not going to be a bad smell. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's true. VOCs are sneaky like that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure I don't know. Do all of them have a smell? Maybe not. I don't so, know. Uh, no, like your laminate floor. Okay, yeah, You yeah, wouldn't yeah. know that your laminate floor is off gassing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's get into the health concerns, which is this is the scariest part, you could say. Um, VOCs include a variety of chemicals that can cause eye, nose, and throat irritation, shortness of breath. Headaches, fatigue, nausea, dizziness, and skin problems. So nothing we haven't heard before from other things. Yeah. We talk about. Is it COVID or is it VOCs? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, higher concentrations may cause irritation of the lungs, as well as damage to the liver, kidney, or central nervous system. Long-term exposure may also cause uh, may also cause damage to the liver, kidneys, or central nervous system as well. Yeah. Which is that's important. You but, haven't said fertility yet. Yeah, I, I don't. 
I don't think. I'm, I'm assuming it is. I mean, it has to be. So if it's like, like an endocrine disruptor, which disrupts our hormones and our mm -hmm. brain, then it could, I guess, be a fertility. Because okay, I mean, like, if a if a pregnant woman is smelling the new car smell, outrageous amounts of VOCs, I I, I would. I would assume that it would do something if it's like a lot, pretty yeah. much. But I feel like if it's like in passing, probably not. Um, some VOCs are suspected of causing cancer, and some have been shown to cause cancer in humans, which makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> the health effects caused by VOCs depend on the concentration and length of exposure to the chemicals. So yeah, it depends really how long have you been smelling it, how long have you been exposed to it. I would assume like if it's low nothing would really happen or it wouldn't really affect you in a big way that you would notice maybe? Yeah, so most of the time our biggest side effects from VOCs come from long-term exposure. Yeah. And that would be if you are a painter as a oh, profession. Yeah, yeah. Um, you are using candles and fragrances in your house mm -hmm. forever, you know? Over time. You, you work at Pattern and Body? No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, uh, maybe. <laughs> Uh, but here's the thing, it's not something that's actually going to cause you severe damage while you're older, right? Yeah, So yeah. the question is, do a lot of these random cancers that the elderly develop... That's what I was thinking, Is it coming too. from a lifelong exposure to pollution and mm -hmm. chemicals? Because, I mean, pesticides. some people get cancer and, like, they never smoked, they never did anything, yeah. and stuff like that. So it's like, it would make sense that it would come from something like this. Yeah. Which is like, you have no... We really have no choice. Yeah, there's, like, and there's really no direct correlation to a lot of it. It's just like the the supposition, well, we're poisoning ourselves, so over time we're actually going to get sick from that poison. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, most people are not affected by short-term exposure to the low levels of uh, VOCs found in homes. Some people may be more sensitive, such as like people with asthma. Um, for long-term exposure to low levels of VOCs, research is ongoing to better understand any health effects from these exposures. So that's good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> They're researching it as we speak, hopefully, and uh, trying to learn a little bit more about it, because I feel like we don't know much about it. Uh, no, and in fact, we've kind of discussed this when we talked about pesticides, but you know how a lot of makeup products are banned in Europe because of harmful chemicals? It's the same idea as so a lot of the stuff we have here um, that's known to cause harm, but there's no real proof on how bad it causes harm, mm -hmm. is banned in Europe, but not banned in the United States. Wow. Yeah. Because the Euro Europeans are not even taking a chance that it could cause harm, right? Well, I'm moving out. <laughs> I'm moving out of the country. Mm -hmm. It was nice knowing you guys. Whereas the Americans are like, well, there's no solid proof that it's causing harm. Yeah. But that's so bad, though. It's, it's kind of a slippery slope, right? That is so bad. It's yeah. like, why does there need to be proof? We should not if even it's take the ice. risk. <laughs> if it's killing Ratatouille. <gasps> Did you see Suicide Squad, the new one? It's so good. It, I was surprised. They brought it back. I was surprised. I didn't even see. Okay, I didn't even see the first one. I heard it was bad. Oh my god. So I was like, I never we turned it off. I never watched it. But someone, uh, one of my friends, was, has HBO Max, and yeah. he's like, "I'll stream it for you guys." And we're like, "Okay." And I was actually invested. I actually liked it. Um, King Shark, such a cutie. I know. I liked the, <laughs> the Sebastian the Rat. That's what triggered me with Ratatouille. Yeah. Because he calls him Ratatouille. Mm -hmm. I love, and I was so mad when I thought Sebastian was going to die, but then he doesn't, so it's okay. Yeah, it was so good. Oh, I gave away the ending. Sebastian's yeah. fine, y'all. I won't tell y'all what happened, <laughs> but Sebastian's fine. I hope uh, you've already seen Suicide Squad, if you're listening. <laughs> We're sorry. <laughs> I'm not telling you what happens to Sebastian, only that he, it's like, does the dog die? Sebastian yeah, the yeah, rat yeah. does not die. Okay. And yeah. that was the only important thing to me, really. Yeah, that's fine. That's yeah. fine. So, anyway, that's what, sorry, that was a digression. Oh my gosh. They really um, brought it back though. Watch Suicide, the new one. The new yes, one. Yes, the new one, not the first with one. With Idris Elba, not the one with Will Smith. Yeah, yeah. Poor Will Smith. Um, <laughs> so, uh, the risk of health effects from inhaling any chemical, not just VOCs, really does depend how much is in the air, how long, how often are you breathing it in. Um, breathing in low levels of VOCs for long periods of time may increase some people's risk of health problems. Um, several studies suggest that exposure to VOCs may make symptoms worse for people with asthma or people who are sensitive to particular chemicals and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's important to remember that VOCs refers to a group of chemicals. It's not just one thing. It's I'm actually pulling that out. Yeah, like uh, the one I talked about earlier. That's just a specific one. 
Each chemical has its own toxicity and potential for causing different health effects. So it does depend on the kind of VOC, how long are you inhaling it, some might affect you differently than others. Yeah, I'm trying to pull up the list of main chemicals that cause VOC. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a bunch of scientific words. It but, is. Um, yeah. Okay, so there are some ones you might know that are common for VOC, and these occurs in, in and then I'll talk about the products too. Yeah. Um, acetone, fingernail polish remover. So you know who actually gets really sick from VOCs? Nail ladies. <gasps> That's so true. Because nail polish gives off VOCs, the acetone gives off VOCs, lots of chemical, and then if you get those real fake ones that produce like the, the dust, acrylics. Yeah, um, very, that's why they wear masks even before wearing mm -hmm. masks was cool. Yeah, they would always, they always wear masks. Yeah. yeah. Um, actic acid, butanol, carbon disulfide, ethanol, alcohol, some alcohols, formaldehyde, and methylene chloride. So those are the common ones, there's actually a lot more, but you've probably heard a lot of those works. Yeah, you know. yeah, they're, for sure. The idea is they're mixed into things that we're using every day. Yeah, so there's a bunch of different kinds, really. And yes. that's just the beginning. I'm sure it's a very long, long list. Yes. But and yeah, then so I'll give a more specific <laughs> list in a second. Yeah, 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 it sounds good. So now I'll just talk a little bit about the symptoms again. There's the short term exposure symptoms. And so this can range if you were breathing in VOCs for a few hours or days. It's pretty much just your eye, nose, and throat irritation, headaches, nausea, vomiting, dizziness or worsening of asthma symptoms if you have asthma. But it's like, these are such common symptoms. They are. So it's, I feel like it's so so frustrating. You know, and I believe it too, because I've been in people's houses where they lit um, VOC candle, like uh, basically anything that's like a paraffin wax mm -hmm. gives off a bad VOC, which is why you should really only burn soy. Yeah. And even then like low fragrance or natural fragrance candles. So people's houses when they're burning, um, paraffin wax, mm -hmm. I will actually get like a runny nose and runny eyes from it. Yeah, and I'm sure like a lot of people get like the Febreze candles because they're yeah. cheaper. They're so cheaper. It's like yeah. it's more convenient to buy them, which unfortunately life is like that. But yeah, even those air wick air fresheners, mm -hmm. like if someone has an air wick plugged in anywhere in their house, I will feel it immediately mm -hmm. because I just, I'm so sensitive to that type of whatever yeah. VOC is yeah. coming off of it. That's so scary. I know. And then chronic exposure, which this is like years or a whole lifetime, it's basically just cancer. <laughs> just cancer. <laughs> cancer, liver and kidney damage, and then central nervous system damage. Oh. But That's yeah. some dark stuff. Um, so you're telling me, or I'm telling you, that everything in our house is poisoning us. Yep. You ready to get even more upset? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a much more comprehensive list. Certain perfumes and makeups that emit smell. Perfumes especially. So when you're buying perfume, you really, even designer perfumes can have VOCs in them. How dare they? I know. So you need to be really, really picky when choosing a natural fragrance, which is why a lot of women use essential oils. They're not emitting VOCs, oh, yeah. right? Um, it gets the worse. Oil diffusers, oil diffusers. Yeah, oil diffusers. I need one. <laughs> Uh, paint, paint strippers, and other solvents, we knew that. Wood preservatives, which you said lacquer. Mm -hmm. uh, aerosol sprays, so let's think of that. Certain hairsprays, dry shampoos. Dry shampoo? Oh my I god, know. that's scary because I don't, I don't I use, use dry shampoo, use. but a lot of women use a lot yes, of dry shampoo. I use a lot of dry shampoo. You're supposed to use the powder, where you, it's like in a powder. Honestly, it just doesn't work. doesn't do it for me. Nobody likes that one either. I need the they, Then you can see it too. So it's Exactly. Like, so at Target, I, would, I can't remember what the name brand is, but I use a name brand that specifically says, even though it's an aerosol component, mm -hmm. it's not using VOCs. Wow. So you can actually look. Uh, for okay. your hair sprays, yeah, your hair sprays, your dry shampoos, heat protector and spray, basically anything that's being propelled, you want to make sure that it's not, there's no aerosol involved. Okay. Um, cleaners and disinfectants, so your household cleaners, disinfectants are a big one right now because of the vid. Never cleaning my house again. <laughs> <laughs> Moth repellents and air fresheners, we talked about that, mm -hmm. so those plug-in air fresheners. Yeah, um, I actually candles. use those. Yeah. Um, even like your air fresheners you hang in your cars, those can oh. emit a VOC too. Uh, fuel and automotive products, we talked about yeah. that. Hobby supplies, so glue, craft glue, any like kind of craft paint. What um, about acrylic paint? Acrylics, yeah. 
oils can no. emit a VOC. No. That's why it has that smell. You ever get like a headache from acrylic smell? You are gonna be a little upset. I know I was. Dry clean clothing because the chemicals they use for dry cleaning is very toxic. So this is like if you take your clothes, you take your clothes in, in, yeah, and you bring it back home, the smell that's coming off dry clean clothing is high VOC. Uh, pesticides, I'm not too surprised about pesticides. Yeah, pesticides, that makes sense. Cause it's like, you don't want to inhale those either way. New furniture smell, new carpet smell, new car smell. Oh my God. All VOCs. You ever gotten a piece of new furniture that's kind of plasticky smelling? Mm -hmm. Pillows? You ever gotten a pillow that's like plasticky smelling? VOC. Jesus. Um, office equipment such as that smell of the copy machine and those heavy duty printers. You know that like smell? Isis is now just realizing how much VOC she's inhaled in her whole life. Oh my god. No. <laughs> no. Look on your face. You're like, oh my god, I definitely smelled hot before. <laughs> I can't wait to edit this and see all the faces I've made because I know I've made a lot. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, printer ink, uh, that really heavy, hot smell. That's so scary. You know, in college, we had an offset printer, like the giant one. Yeah. And we had to put all the ink, you know, like, dang it. <laughs> yeah. Um, carbonless copy paper, too. So if you're doing... Um, you know, making copies, mm -hmm. that smell that kind of comes from the copy machine, that's a VOC. People like that smell too. Yeah. There's copies. Yep. Permanent markers and uh, photographic solution. So if you've ever been in a dark room, I'm sure you did that in college oh, or yeah. high school. Mm -hmm. um, all, all, we knew that was a VOC though, because it's kind of odd. It smells like caffeine. Yeah. It's kind of obvious that one's bad for you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's crazy. It's crazy because some of these, like, okay, they make sense, like pesticides, like, I'm definitely not going to smell that. But, you know, like, your, your new car smell and stuff like that, like, that smells people actually like. Those Furniture, smells. They'll mattress be like, oh, I got a new car, smelling it up in there, you know, like. And then there's a few more, your laminate floors in your mm -hmm. house. Uh, that's been well known for a while that laminate emits VOCs. Um, but it can, it's been shown to actually commit some harmful VOCs. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, what the heck? Yeah, so the, it's a long list. I'm pretty sure I missed a few. I'm sure there's way more that we didn't even say. Yeah. So what about the modern home? Is there a VOC inspector? Unfortunately, there's not. There's, I feel like it'd be hard to. It'd be very hard. You see how, we just talked about how, what a wide variety. Like, they'd have to look at your, all your belongings too. Yes. <laughs> how old is your couch? How old are your, how old is this? How old is that? But also with that chemical list we went through, the chemical list is much longer than the chemical I, Like I only listed what, like 10? Yeah. There's like hundreds. So, I mean, it just, really it's not realistic for there to be a VOC inspector. Hello, darkness, what? That's so sad. <laughs> so, basically you're on your own when it comes to VOCs, inspecting VOCs in your house. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of TikToks, there's a lot of YouTube videos, there's a lot of Instagram moms who are all, all about cleansing. You've seen, you've seen that, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You yeah, can't really. have this in your house, you can't have that in your house. I don't want my baby to grow up to have two heads because I burned an air freshener, burned a candle, and don't burn an air freshener, but yeah, you know what I'm talking <laughs> yeah. about. Um, what are some of the things you can do? All right, I'm, I'm gonna give you the list. I'm gonna give you the list. Listen to me, do not listen to the Instagram mom who's peddling you her essential oils. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why are you laughing <laughs> Because I don't know, like I've seen a video about those moms with the essential oils. It's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. The but... young living essential oils. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So listen to me here, okay? All right. Get your HVAC system maintained. Change your filters, people. Change your HVAC filters. Three months if you got dogs, you can go to six months if you buy a fancy one. You can actually buy um, like reusable filters now where you like oh. clean them out and put them back in. Interesting. It's really nice. Get your ventilation system cleaned out. Buy a HEPA grade air filter for the house like they have on airplanes. Yes. Buy more indoor plants. I love that one. Indoor plants oxygenate your house. If only I could keep them alive. <laughs> yeah, if you can keep them alive. Open the windows on good air quality days. So don't open the windows on bad air Check quality. your weather app. It tells yes, you. It will tell it you. It tells you if it's a bad uh, quality air day or whatever. Never allow anyone to smoke cigarettes in or around your house. From out of hide, people. 
Uh, clean your new clothes before wearing them. That's a big one. If you get it online or oh. even just from the store, mm -hmm. it's admitting VOCs from the packaging. Wow. Yeah. Or even if they washed it. Dang it. I'm like, sometimes I just like buy it and like so excited to wear it. <laughs> Don't use synthetic air fresheners or candles. Don't use synthetic perfume. If you're painting or doing any construction, make sure the area is well ventilated and that you have your ductwork cleaned out. Okay. We talked about that. Make sure the paint that you're using is low VOC. And I, quick disclaimer, I am like 90% sure all paint they sell is low VOC now. That's I don't good. think they can sell high VOC paint That's good. anymore. Yeah, I think all of the paint is low VOC. If you get new carpets or floors, ask about off-gassing. So okay. you know, so you're ready. So you can get proper ventilation. And that's it. I mean, wow. that was just, that was rough. That was rough. That is a, definitely another scary one. I feel like we kind of like started off scary, calmed down a little bit, and then got a little bit scary again, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's a roller um, coaster. But you know, it's also like kind of a brief topic. Like there's yeah. just not much to say about it, right? Yeah, there's not much information about it. I feel like it's something that's still being researched to this day so. or even just not enough people know about it to care yeah that too because i had no idea that was even a thing so yeah it's kind of a brief topic there's not tons to say on it yeah um but yeah i think it's so important for everyone to know about it yeah i agree definitely something that should be talked about more or at least people should be more aware of. yeah and yeah. that note is it time for credits it's time for credits. Music credit is Kevin McLeod of Incomtech. Source credit is the US federal uh, law regulations on VOCs. Check us out on YouTube at A-Action Home Inspection Group Houston, on Facebook, on Instagram at Home Inspector underscore Texas, and on TikTok at Houston Home Inspector. Our next topic is our season finale. Yay, we did it. We made it through season three. <laughs> um, and it's on code. Oh. I thought that would be a good way to wrap up. That should be interesting. Yeah, the story of things in your house and talking about housing code. That'd be good. Yeah, I'm sorry. Good. I think it is. I think it'll be an interesting one. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm not sure where the research will take us, but it'll take us somewhere. We'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure <laughs> it out. And until then, I'm Mary. And I'm Macy. And we're the homegirls. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll chat with you next time.